hey guys and welcome to a new video so uh this is a 1993 viking sp 160 pop-up camper uh i've been wanting a pop-up camper well not necessarily a pop-up i wanted a small like a teardrop uh the prices on these things are astronomical right now and uh i just couldn't do it so i bought a trailer to build into my own pop-up camper or not pop up but into a teardrop and then this guy popped up for sale and i couldn't pass up the price so it's gonna need a lot of work <clears throat> uh, the roof has a few leaks in it which it's a pop up uh, the canvas however is in fantastic shape and so is 90 percent of the wood around it well it is right now we're gonna need to address some things to keep it that way but first off it's just grimy so before we get inside we're going to clean the outside it's got an awning on it as well and i got a bunch of new parts that came with it that's always a good sign but anyway first things first let's uh let's clean this thing shall we okay so before we hit it with the power washer I went and just picked up some regular Mean Green Super Strength. Removes grease and grime and grit. And then, of course, I've got some scrubby pads and a brush. And let's just see how much of this crap that we can get off of this camper before we go. Using the big stuff. So. But there's a lot of work that's going to have to be done on this camper. There's some roof patching that we're going to do, and I'm going to film all of that stuff as well so you can see how I address it. Looks like I take a tag off of it. <laughs> Cody's at work, he's gonna bring us some stuff on his way home, which we won't be able to do tonight because it'll be dark by then, but it will aid in the ceiling and stuff of the roof. Yeah. That looks like it's gonna come off pretty well. I was gonna tell him when the last time was she had an actual bath. So I'm gonna continue with this and we'll be back in a minute. Okay. So our initial wash is done. Not too shabby. It's definitely more white than it was. <laughs> so I guess now let's uh, get it on more flat ground and open the pop-ups, I guess. All right, so back on the camper, I went to Lowe's and I got some expanding foam so that people can be mad at me in the comments. And I picked up some of this, these tech screws that I can't seem to open. These are self-tapping, and they have a rubber grommet to try to help keep some of the water out. And so what I'm doing here is <sighs> trying to go underneath the edge of this seam. These staples have started pulling out across the bottom. And so what we're going to do is we're going to push the tin back in place. And then I'm going to use the screws to secure it back to the bottom because the wood underneath is nice and solid. It's actually nice and solid in a lot of places, so I'm gonna, if it is rotting, it's not going to be a problem I'm going to take care of anytime soon. <laughs> That'll be a, a next year issue to resolve. So, looks like they're 5 sixteenths or an 8 millimeter as well. I'm going to run them in because all my good Milwaukee stuff is at work. 
So the heart home tool will save the day for this one. So let's start putting them in. So we got our flashing all screwed back up. Originally they used staples that go up through it. Uh, the staples just aren't very strong. And uh, in an area where they use salt and brine and stuff on the roads, it's gonna rust it. And so those little staples just can't hang on and so it rusts and then they come out. Uh, these two holes in this dent, funny enough, are actually from me. Uh, the day I actually bought it, uh, the guy was showing me the inside of it and uh, it came off one of the jacks because he had just moved it. And the jack was sitting there and the trailer tilted and choo, stabbed two good little holes right there in it. So I get to fix that too. All right, so me and Cody are going around doing the world's ugliest caulking job and Cody's putting the new tire on the passenger side because this tire that was on there has a flat spot that's really bad so it's wavy uh, it still holds air and i mean once it, the tire warms up it pulls fine and it doesn't shake or anything but when it's cold you can feel that vibration in it because of those that flat spot so we're going to put that one on as the spare and then that's the new one and that's going to be our new riding tire so I'm gonna keep doing the caulking. Okay, so even though it looks horrible in here right now, we've got it partially popped up. Uh, we've been having trouble. This back corner didn't wanna come up on its own really. You had to pretty much do most of the work itself. And all these cables that were underneath this cabinet, these are the wire tracks that do all the lifting. And as it turns out, one of them had gotten tangled all up and was uh, in a bind down there so it wasn't even pulling anymore it was just kind of laying there and uh, thankfully I noticed that and I don't know how I hadn't before so I took the cable you got something all over the camera dude so I took it untangled them all lowered it up and down a few times got it rewrapped put the cable back on put uh, the cable clamps on it and now for the first time since we've had it it lifted up entirely on its own. All four corners are now up. I've got to put the post in for the bed supports. But I was more excited that it lifted itself than anything else. So how freaking awesome is that? One step closer. So now we're going to start cleaning. I'm going to start siliconing and spray foaming up the holes and then Cody's got some more tile, the peel and stick tile to lay in here. And what we're gonna do is So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just lay it over the pre-existing linoleum. Because the linoleum's not a bad shape, it's just really dirty. So we're gonna clean all that up real real good first and then patch the holes, put the tile down, and then we'll build cabinets over all of it. So isn't that right, Pedro? Ain't it right? Okay. All right, so Cody's been in here cleaning. I got the coax, the little wire that was ran across the floor. I got it pulled out. Uh, I'm gonna have to relocate that ground, uh, go somewhere out, maybe further closer to the wall and down to the frame of the trailer because right now it's at the edge of the floor where the original cabinet and seating area used to be. And that's not gonna fly anymore because uh, now it's in the way. And I want to be able to mount that power panel somewhere on the wall now. So that power panel is going to go up, mount somewhere to the wall, and then we'll reroute all the wiring and I'll trim out what I'm not going to need anymore. I just want a few outlets. And then uh, I want to add two outlets that are just USB receptacles uh, on each side near the beds. So you can just throw your USB plug in it and go. But I've got to go get dinner because I'm starving. Cody's going to work on sweeping the floor out some more and then cleaning it and getting it prepared to lay down tile. So, all right. There we are. All right. Nighttime is upon us now. Cody got the floor and put in. It's looking snazzy. We didn't go all the way up underneath the cable track assembly because I'm going to build a new box over that end. 
and over this end. Um, I did get in there and caulk all the corners and where the tin meets the bottom of the camper. All that's been caulked up now and I'm going to go back and probably shoot some foam around it as I build the box. And that'll take care of that. We also got the windows wiped down inside and out. Cody's got his toolbox. Putting everything up. And we're going to call it a night. And then we'll get back on it tomorrow. So, tomorrow. Alright, so we're leaving Lowe's. Got some more building materials. Some screws and stuff. Let's go back to the house and start putting the camper together. Here we are. I started framing up uh, boxes, me and Cody. Cody's doing my measurements. I'm cutting. And essentially we're just going to build a box across that back wall with seating on it and flip up for storage. Same thing across this front to cover up this mess with the track system. So nobody gets hurt and it's not in the way and it'll seal that off. And then we're just going to leave this area mainly open for the time being. I just want to pretty up that corner and stuff. So. Let's get to continuing to cut on it and screwing these in. With well, the nighttime sneaking up on us, I had to plug a light in. We got the overhead air running and it's cooling off in here. It's feeling pretty good. Kind of got hot. So we caulked all the seams and stuff yesterday, made it nice and ugly. Like I said, right now I've been working on building some boxes to cover the corners and stuff and kind of square it off. This will also kind of doubles a little bit of seating. It's good and solid. I mean, it's going to hold plenty of weight. We're going to put a piece of plywood over it. We're going to finish the box here too to make it like a big corner. It'll be covered in plywood. Probably get some cushions or some pillows or something on it. And we'll go from there. All right. So I started just temporarily setting up the side paneling. All my bracing is finished. The cicadas are congratulating me, as you can hear. So this is just how they're gonna sit, sorta. They're not in there at all. That one ended up being too short because I was running out of pieces. So the overhang on the top up there will cover what you can see. Plus I'm gonna stain it so I think it'll look fine. Now I just gotta build a box or a cut a piece of paneling to cover that tire well. This tire well will remain exposed. It'll just get some paint over it and uh, I'll probably glue some soft edging around that so that it's not sharp or anything in case you fall on it. But yeah, there's where we're at so far. It's time for a dinner break, and then I will keep cutting paneling. All right, so they're just sitting in there for now, but the tops of the boxes are made. Cody went ahead and put the paneling up all the way, so it's pretty much up. That one piece is still wonky over there, but in a big deal. This piece I'm actually going to put magnets on the back of so you can just pull this off and that's going to access the breaker box and stuff. Uh, I still got to go through and cut uh, boxes for the outlets and put those in. And I'm going to put them, I'm going to add one on each side of the beds too just so I can put a USB receptacle in there so that you can uh, plug your phone directly into it and stuff without having to go for an actual like uh, standard wall outlet. So, but a little out of time, just getting together. I'm tired, Cody's tired, we're going to bed, calling it a night, and we'll pick up on this tomorrow. All right, <clears throat> follow up, date, follow up, update, follow up, update, or well, whatever it is. Paneling's in place, once again, kind of temporary. I'm gonna go back and get magnets for that piece removable. Um, we've got the air on again. Got a light in here. And I got a heck of a deal on a Honda power inverter so we're seeing if it would run the camper. That is on eco mode which means low idle or whatever that is. Um, so it's the most fuel economy you can get out of one. So I picked that up at Lowe's the other day. Got a smoking deal on that. We'll talk about that later but I wanted to know if that would run this thing, you know, while boondocking or whatever. If, <clears throat> if we didn't have uh, shore power to connect to, would that run, you know, the AC and some lights and stuff? And if it'll run the AC and some lights, then without running the air, it would definitely run anything I needed to. Plus, it's on eco mode. So, 
it's not even at maximum potential right now or in maximum wattage output. So while that's been doing that, I've been over here sanding the tops of the seating area in the, in the cabinet space that I'm building, <clears throat> the top part. And as I've been sanding on them, Cody's been going back and putting stain on it. There's some sawdust on this one where I was getting overspray. So there it is. I really like the, the look of this with that. I mean, I know it's cheaper wood and it's got ridges and stuff in it. It's not perfect, but I really like that color and the way that looks. So I was going to do two coats. I think one coat's going to be perfect. I really like this crazy design and it looks like a, I don't know, something evil looking. <laughs> but Pedro, what do you think? Huh? Pedro. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's stained and then uh, we'll give it a, uh, it'll probably be another week or so. Oh, and I'm out of gas. Cool beans. So I get some gas, put in this guy, and we'll get this back up and going here in a minute. I know there wasn't much in it. So, anyway, uh, that does that. Working on, I just finished sanding the last piece, so we'll get stain on it. It can go in, or go over here to dry, and then in about a week or so when uh, I get some more time. It's supposed to rain starting shortly. It's supposed to rain for like three days, so I'm gonna try to get everything packed up and get this thing put away uh, before it gets wet again. Because when it gets wet, you wanna leave them up to dry before you put them up. You don't wanna put these things up wet. So anyway, that's what's going on now. So I'm gonna put the stain on this last piece, let it sit, and then in a week or so, we'll come back and we'll put a clear lacquer on it. Really seal it in and make it shiny and slick looking. So there's that, let's move on.